In this video, I want to give a very brief introduction to quantum mechanics. And I want to do it in the form of a comparison to classical mechanics so we can see the fundamental difference between these two. So classical mechanics models all physical systems as some mass with a position x. And x is a three-dimensional vector that's a function of time. And if we know these two things, then we can calculate any property we would want to know about the system. For example, the velocity is just going to be the first time derivative of the position. And the acceleration will be the second time derivative of the position. The momentum will be the velocity scaled by the mass. The kinetic energy will be one-half m times the inner product of v with itself. So if we know these two things, m and the position for all times, then we know everything we would ever want to know about this system. So this is the game of classical mechanics. Find the position for all times. So usually we know m, and it's a constant in time, and we know the force acting on the system at all times. And the game is then to find the position for all times. And the way we do this is by using Newton's second law, which relates these two quantities, the force acting on the system and the position. Specifically, it says that the force acting on the system is equal to the mass times the acceleration, which again is the second time derivative of the position. Now, this is a second order differential equation. So to get unique solutions to it, we need two initial conditions, the initial position and the initial velocity. And if you haven't studied differential equations, this is kind of an intuitive thing. You can imagine that if the physical system we're dealing with is a ball falling under the influence of gravity, the position of that system is going to be different based on where we initially drop that ball from, whether we drop it off from our hands or we drop it off of a building, even though the force in both cases is the same. Now, even if the initial position of the ball is the same, the position as a function of later times can still be very different based on what the initial velocity is. So imagine we're standing on top of a building and we throw the ball straight up. Then that position as a function of time is going to be different than if we were to throw the ball downwards, even though the force is the same and the initial position is the same. So this is just to illustrate that we do need both of these initial conditions, the position and the velocity, to get a unique solution to Newton's second law. So more explicitly, the problem we solve in classical mechanics looks like this. We're given some initial position, some initial velocity, and the force that acts on the system as a function of time and we want to find the position for all future times. And we do this by solving Newton's second law type equations. Quantum mechanics is fundamentally different. It models physical systems as vectors in an n-dimensional vector space over the complex numbers, where n is the number of distinguishable states of the system, and further, these vectors have to be normalized. So their inner product with themselves is equal to one. And like the position in classical mechanics, if we know psi for all times, then we know any quantity about the system that we would be interested in knowing. Instead of being given a force that acts on the system, in quantum mechanics we're given a Hamiltonian, which is analogous in the sense that it drives the evolution of the system. And instead of Newton's second law, we use the Schrodinger equation to find out 
how psi changes with time based on the Hamiltonian. So more explicitly, the problem we're solving in quantum mechanics is we're given psi at some initial time plus some boundary conditions and we're given the Hamiltonian as a function of time and we want to find psi for all future times. And the way we do this is by solving the Schrodinger equation. And that's all there is to it. That's the difference between classical mechanics and quantum mechanics. Classical mechanics models systems as uh, things with a position that changes with time under the influence of a force and you can find the position for all times by solving Newton's second law. And quantum mechanics models physical systems as vectors that change under the influence of a Hamiltonian. And you can find what that state vector is for all times by solving the Schrodinger equation.